I'm Julia and I'm teaching at a school in Kent. I currently teach year two and there are 30 children in my class. I did the amazing animals lesson from DK with the egg book um, as a supporting resource. We use this as our animals, uh, including humans, as a lesson within that unit in science. We were specifically looking at life cycles. Previously, we'd looked at the life cycle of a human and of a duckling. Um, and then we revisited that using the egg book to look at different animals that hatch from eggs. The objective specifically that we were tying it to was notice that animals have offspring which grow into adults. From the start of the lesson, we reviewed our knowledge of the different groups of vertebrae, um, which the children did really, really well at. Then we looked down the contents page and decided which of those animals were different parts of the vertebrae. Were they fish? Were they reptiles? Were they birds? So we, we did that first. Then the children were able to choose which animal they researched, which obviously then led to a lot of motivation. Um, we had some very, <laughs> we had some choosing a ladybird. We had some choosing a rainbow trout, which was was really fascinating for them that was obviously something that they were really really interested in I found that the texts themselves were able to be accessed by all of the learners in my class even though I've got some real high-flying readers but I also have some really children that really struggle with reading but they were able to access that I think through the small portions of text um, you know the diagrams you know lending themselves to the context the children will work those out um, so they were really motivated um, to do that and to conduct their own research rather than me saying me deliver the information to them they were then feeding back the information to me which they were really motivated to do when I'm looking for a teaching resource, I'm looking for something that's laid out really, really clearly and um, that isn't overly wordy and um, for me to sort of siphon through. I thought it was laid out really, really clearly. I could see what the outcome was. I could see the sequence of the lesson and I thought, oh, yeah, that's, I would add in something there. Yeah, definitely we'll be doing that bit. I thought it was really, really clear and I really liked that it tied the whole thing into the book. The egg book really supported learning and it's quite unique to be able to have an entire text that would support um, the lesson, doesn't matter what page you turn to. But also using the index page and the contents page, which actually our children hadn't had previous experience because as teachers, we just give them the information they need, not an entire book. I've never actually seen a book like that. I've seen lots of animal books. I've seen lots of books about um, habitat. So if we're looking at a rainforest habitat, if we're looking at a polar region habitat, um, I hadn't seen it classified um in that life cycle way actually so that was really handy and it was a really handy book specifically for that objective in science about how offspring are born how offspring develop and it clearly mapped it out there was no information in there that I thought oh they don't need to read that section everything on the page was completely relevant to what their children needed to know it was lovely to have a whole book as well to share with the children rather than just an excerpt and they've lots of them after the lesson, well, oh, can I take that book home? Can I borrow that book? So we're sharing it around the class slowly. I definitely felt the children preferred orally presenting the work to me, which is something, you know, as primary school teachers, we don't do enough of. But they were able to present their key facts and talk about their animals in a group, decide what they were presenting. So it also really lent itself to the literacy skills of oracy, rehearsing the sentences, presenting that to the class. And then that fed into their written work as well. It was fantastic to be able to um, also incorporate our knowledge of nonfiction, which we've been learning in English and apply that to our science lesson. So we were able to tie in our knowledge of nonfiction, the layout of the text, the use of headings, subheadings, key fact boxes, key vocabularies, um, an explanation flow diagram of how the egg hatched um, on the different pages. I think the key facts that we developed were those oracy skills, speaking and listening. They were able to ask each other questions at the end of the presentation, which was fantastic. And it really showed the engagement of the audience with the speakers. They were able to actually tune in and ask like a clarifying question, ask them to give another example about different animals that they had researched. So by the end of the lesson, through researching um, and highlighting key points within the text, the children were able to orally present um, a presentation within groups of about five or six on their animal. They're able to share how their animal's born, the life cycle, keywords that maybe the 
audience who hadn't researched that particular animal didn't understand and present that to them. They were then able to use that in their writing. So they wrote down some key facts about their animal and drew some diagrams on how their animal um, grew from a, a young animal and developed through to having its own offspring. The fact that it laid out which curriculum objective that it would link to um, and which topic it would link to, I think that was really fantastic. It was just so clear and precise that it would meet that objective. And then it sort of gave me the freedom to develop um, it on from there and to link it in with my English as well. I would completely recommend a lesson packs like this with supporting books. I think it gives teachers a really good starting place and some guidance on how to structure a lesson, how to make it engaging for your students and give them that autonomy and learning.